Hey guys, it's Lisa here. And in today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating for all of you how to use the rubric option in Google Classroom. You know, using a rubric for students is, is a great way to offer students a success criteria that sets clear expectations for an assignment. What it also does is it provides actionable feedback that clearly explains to the students what they need to work on. With that being said, it's not only great for the students, it also helps the educators as well because it provides us with the data that we need to drive our instruction in the classroom. So if you see frequently that students are scoring lower in a certain category other than others, uh, than others, then you know as an educator we immediately know that that's something that we need to work on as a whole in our classroom. So without further ado, we are going to go into Google Classroom and we are going to create a rubric together. So I have on a private account. Um, practice classes. So I have added myself as a student on one class and on my other class I have myself as the, the teacher. This way I can go in and I can kind of see what it looks like from both the teacher and the student point of view. Um, so if you want to create a rubric, you're going to go into your classwork here. We're going to create an assignment. Okay, I'm just going to call this uh, homework two, okay, because we want to keep the video as short as possible. Uh, so the instructions do homework too. Okay, that that's simple. And then we're going to add a document. So I'm just going to add a random document from my drive. Okay, um, and let's see how about. This one's fine, uh, right here. Okay, so I added a document here. Now, if this is something that the students are going to be working on and you're going to be grading it, you're gonna to wanna to change this over here to make a copy for each student. Okay, and then over here, you know, I can just put a due date. So, okay, we're just gonna put for tomorrow. Okay, and then if you want to assign this for later, so that like, let's say I wanted it to be scheduled for tomorrow to be posted to my Google Classroom. I do have a video showing you how to schedule assignments ahead of time, this saves a bunch of time. And as teachers, we know our time is like super important. We always have a million things to do and we don't know what's gonna pop up. So you can check out that video if you want. But here we go, down here at the bottom, you're going to see it says rubric, okay? I'm going to click the rubric, okay? And it gives you the options to create, reuse, or import from Sheets. So if you had a rubric in Google Sheets and you wanted to use that, that's what you would click. If you have already used a rubric and it's one that you're going to be using for many assignments, for example, if you had a standard writing rub rubric, then you would click this and then you would choose from the rubrics. I'll show you that afterwards. Today we are going to create a rubric. So we're going to click here to create our rubric. Okay, and um, I always leave this on, use scoring, because you know I want to be able to use this to score the students. And right here where it says criteria and title, um, I can make this category spelling, grammar, and punctuation, right? Because most of our rubrics usually have something like that. Okay, and then the description would be what you're looking for. So, you know, in this section, I will be looking for errors and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm not gonna finish that. And then you have to decide how many points you want the first, the first level. Okay, so let's say you're, you know, obviously we wanna do it out of 100, right? Um, I'm only going to be doing two categories for this. So I'm gonna make this uh, 50. Okay, um, like I said, I just wanna show you how to do this. We're not gonna create an entire rubric. So if this is 50 and my level title would be something like, you could do uh, you could do another number. So if you wanted to keep it 50, you could do that. Uh, I'm going to write exceeds expectations. Okay, exceeds expectations. And then here I can write zero to two errors. Okay, so this this way the student would only would get the full 50 points if they had zero to two spelling, grammar, or punctuation errors. Then once this 
is done, I'm going to hit my plus sign here and it's going to add a level. Now you see the title stays the same and then the description is going to stay the same for all of the levels going across. So if I made the other one 50, I can make this one 40. And I can say that this is just meets expectations. Okay, and then here we could say three to five errors. And then again, and this was supposed to be 40. Okay, I'll make this one 30. And we can say that this is um, approaching expectations. And this can be we can say about six to seven errors. And then we want a 20 and a 10. And I can go back. Okay. You could say needs improvement. And this can be your please see me comment. Okay. This is eight to, you could say eight to 10. And this is more than 10 errors. Perfect. Okay. So that is our, our, our first category here. Okay. So then down here at the bottom, we're going to add another criterion. So criteria. So there we can put uh, use of evidence. Okay. Because if this was a, uh, an activity where students had to use textual evidence to to support what it was that they were writing. Um, here's our category for that. Okay. Okay, so let's just say that there, we had, they had to use four pieces of evidence. Again, I'm gonna make this 50, okay? Because this is the last criteria that we're going to be providing. And then it's gonna be the same. Exceeds expectations, okay? Okay, four pieces of evidence used. Okay, and then we're going to go on. So this would be the 40 and the 30 and the 20 and then the 10, right? Because zero would be as if they didn't hand anything in at all. Okay. And this would be three pieces of evidence, two pieces of evidence, one piece of evidence, zero pieces of evidence. They wrote something but didn't include any evidence in that. Okay, and then from here, all you're going to do, um, and I'm not going to fill those in just for time sake, you're going to come back up to the top and you're going to click save. And you'll see that it's going to bring you back to your assignment. Okay, and you're going to see that there's a rubric right here. Okay, so that's awesome. There it is. You made sure that you made a copy for each student. And then I'm just going to click assign. Okay, so there it is. It's homework number two. Now that that's assigned, I'm going to go in as my student. Okay, I have my, my daughter's account. Okay, she's my student. My apologies, I meant to go into Google Classroom. There we go, okay. So, all right, here we go. Practice class. Okay, this is now I see that I have a homework that's due. I'm now the student. I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I'm just going to write something quickly. Okay. All right, there we go. I'm going to turn that in. Yes, I definitely want it turned in. 
And now you'll be able to see what this looks like from the teacher's point of view. So I'm gonna go back in, okay? And I'm going to click homework two. I'm going to see that one student handed it in. Okay, and then I'm going to go into the assignment. So now you'll see, because there is a rubric attached, I'm still able to, to write my comments. Okay, so your comment bank, you can do your private comments as well. Okay, so it says the comment bank is empty, but if I wanted to write something here, I could highlight something and then I can write a comment. Okay, so I could do that and that provides the you know um, precise actionable feedback that the students need. But then coming back here, so it says spelling and grammar, and I can click whichever one of the levels I feel that the student fell in. So there they got a 40 for that. Okay, and they got a 30 for this. Now the great thing is, is that if you feel that students kind of are falling in between one, one or two of the levels, you always have the option to go in and just manually write a number. So if you wanted to give them a 45 rather than a 40, um, because they fell in between the exceeds expectations and meets expectations, then you can go back and you can do that as well. Okay, but you'll see right here, I have that all done. It gives me a grade out of 100, which is perfect. And then all I have to do is hit return and that will send the grade to the student. It'll notify the student what their grade is and they can actually go in and they can see what the comments were and they can see where they fell on the rubric. So I really hope that this video helped all of you. If you have any questions, comment down below, but please do not forget to like and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. Thanks everyone.